Welcome to the Fox One Corp series of CU training videos. I'm Dave Springford. Please check out my website at www.fox1corp.com for all the gliding products that I can supply. The link is posted in the comments section. Please subscribe to this Fox One Corp YouTube channel, and if you have questions, post them in the comments. In this video, I'll show you two online resources for Waypoint and Airspace files, and then how to load the files into CU. Next, I'll show you how to edit waypoints and create or add new waypoints. CU recognizes pretty much all the waypoint file types used by different manufacturers, so you should download whatever format is used by your nav system. For Airspace, CU recognizes the Newport piece, Open Air, and the Navitor Cub format. The first resource for flying sites in North America is John Liebacher's Turnpoint Exchange, found at soaringweb.org. Once we're on John's site, we want to click on the Turnpoint Exchange link, and then North America, and then click on the hand here for down to the U.S. Table of Contents. Today what we're going to do is we're going to go to South Carolina, and we're going to find the Bermuda High Soaring School. We're going to get the files for the 15 meter nationals from 2019. So we'll click on that link. Once we're on the Bermuda High page, we can see there are a lot of options here. So what we want is we want to go to this one, Files Formatted for Downloading and Importing into your Programs. So once again, we'll click on the hand, and we'll scroll down, and we see again a lot of options. So we have the waypoint files for various manufacturers. What I'm going to use is I'm going to go down here to the CU option because my LX computer uses the CU format. To download this, it's best to right click on the arrow. So we have our download arrow here. We right click on that arrow. We can do save link as. And now we're given the option of saving this Bermuda High Soaring Competition 9 numerical CUP file. I'm not going to save it because I have it saved already. We'll now go to CU and we'll open the file. So the CUP extension on the file represents the CU is obviously CU and the P is a point file or a waypoint file. So to open a waypoint file what we want to do is go to open and then navigate on your computer to the folder where you've stored the file. In my case I have them organized by site so I'm going to go to Bermuda High and then I'm going to select my Bermuda High Soaring Contest 2019 cup file. Double click on that and we get a dialog that opens in CU. This is a fairly important dialog and when we drop down here we can see that we have a couple of options here. We can open in a new window, we can add to the current waypoints and tasks, or we can overwrite the current waypoints and tasks. If we overwrite it's going to take everything that you have in your waypoints and tasks and completely erase them and put the new data in. You may not want to do that. When you change sites, when I go to a contest, I do overwrite because I've already saved my local turn points. So I'll have my Rockton turn points in CU most of the time. And when I go to Bermuda High, I'll do an overwrite and take out the Rockton turn points and have only the Bermuda High turn points. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the open in a new window. We should talk about the add. What that does is it appends all of this information to the waypoint file that's already open in my tasks and windows, which you may not want to do. If you append it, you may have two files from two different sites with two turn point ones and two turn point threes, etc., etc. So using add is not the best option unless you really want to merge two files. So for now, I'm going to use this open in a new window. So we're going to select that and say OK. Once we're here, we've now opened our waypoint file in the map view. And again, I'm going to zoom out. I can use my tools here, or I can use my scroll mouse. So you can see we have Charlotte and Columbia. We're definitely in South Carolina here. This box here allows us to select upon which point the map is going to be centered. So if I go down here a little bit and I select turn point 15, we can see the map switched 
and now our turn point 15 Chira right down here is now centered on the map. If I go back in here and go to the top of the list and select the finish point, we can now see that Bermuda High on the finish point is centered on the map. So we can see all our turn points on the map. We also, as I've shown you before, we have this uh, view type window where we can take a look at different aspects. So we're going to look at waypoint details. In waypoint details, we get a list showing us all the information that's in that waypoint file for each point. One important thing for us to look at is the style. This one says glider site, this one says waypoint, this one says airport with solid runway. So it's important for some flight computers to make sure these waypoints are tagged appropriately so that it'll add them to your nearest list when you're navigating for a landout. So to edit any of these is quite simple. On any of the list views here, we just go over top and we double click. When I double click, I get a dialog that opens that gives me all the details about that waypoint. And here in this drop box, or in this drop down box, that's where I can change the format. So I can change it to a waypoint or a grass runway or an outlanding place. It's an airport with a solid runway. We're going to leave it that way when we finish. Interesting ones, if you're flying in the mountains, you could set a mountain as a, a, a waypoint as a mountain pass. And that then gives you glide to that pass or that saddle and you know you can get through it or not. You could set it as a mountain top with the elevation set to the mountain top. And now you know whether you have glide to that turn point on the top of the mountain or not. Of course, all that information is going to be provided by your elevation here, but having it uh, set as one of these types can help understand what it is. So we said we're going to leave this as an airport with a solid runway. And I'm just going to cancel to ensure we haven't changed anything. So that's the detail view. We can also go in here and we can take a look at the waypoint list. And now we get a list of the waypoints with no details. The icons represent the type. So this dark diagonal line, that represents an airport with a solid runway. This white line is an airport with a grass runway. A W is just a straight waypoint. And we have some unknowns here. And if it was a VOR or a mountaintop or a mountain valley, these would change as well. So again, we can edit any of these just by simply going to it, double clicking, and opening that same dialog. So we'll cancel there. Next thing we can do is we can go here and we can take a look at the map again. And we can see all of our waypoints. I'm going to zoom out. Reset to Bermuda High. I'm going to zoom out and we can see all of our waypoints. Again, if I wanted to modify one, I can simply hover over it, double click, and I get the dialog again. So we'll cancel that. Next thing I wanted to show you is how to add a waypoint. So sometimes when you're not flying a contest, if you're flying tasks and you want to set up a 300 or a 500 or you want to work on a record, you need a waypoint in a specific location. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the vector map. And we should get just a white background appearing behind here. There we go. And there's our waypoints. And what we can see, for example, is that we have, zoom out just a little more, is that, for example, there's a great big hole in here. And I'll scroll down a little bit. And there's a great big hole here. So it might be really nice to have a waypoint there. So without any accurate placement, I can just hover over the map. I can right click, and I can go on the menu and say waypoint here. And if I do that, it opens up the dialog and I can type in the name of my waypoint. So for example, new waypoint. I can select its style. Its latitude, longitude, and elevation are taken from the data on the map. And I say OK. And now suddenly I have a new waypoint down here filling that hole that might be of use for us. Another way to add waypoints is up in the menus here. We have this icon for add waypoint. If I click on that, I get the waypoint editor. And now 
you notice the lat and the long are set to zero and the elevation is set to zero. So that's information I would have to supply myself. I'd have to know the exact location and then type it in. I'm going to cancel that. We're going to go back to our waypoint details here. And the same thing applies here. I can add a waypoint simply by clicking on the Add Waypoint button again and type in the information that I want to add it to the list. So one other site that I wanted to show you where you can get waypoint files is soaringspot.com. So we're going to go to Soaring Spot here. And this is typically used for every other part of the world outside of North America. So Europe and, and Australia, for example, will use Soaring Spot. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down here to this uh, Condor WWGC 2022 pre-world. I'm going to click on that contest. So you need to find the specific contest you want. You go into the page for that contest, go to downloads, and now you will see there are airspace files, a cub file, and an open air file. And then waypoints, there's our cup file, and then various other file types. So depending on your computer, you download what you want. Once they're downloaded and stored on your computer, you can open them and see you the same way we just did with the other. But the last thing I wanted to show you was putting airspace into CU again. And so the CU format is CUB, and that represents again CU and the B for binary, binary airspace. So to do that, we said we go tools and airspace. And one thing I want to do is I want to go back to John Liebacher's Turnpoint Exchange and so you show you where to find airspace. So on the same page where we found our waypoints, at the top, there are airspace options. And we can see there's the Newport piece and the open air format. And the one that says SSA modifications, it removes a lot of the airspace from the full file. So you don't have all the class E's and class D's and airspace that you're actually allowed to fly through in the competition. So these SSA files will include only the things you can't fly in. So you would select one of those, right click, save link as, and download it to where you want it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to see you again, and we're going to look at this dialogue that we saw in a previous video. And what we want to do is take a look in the middle here. This allows us to filter what airspace we see and don't see. So for example, I don't need to see class A or E or F in this case. Uh, but I do want to see restricted areas, prohibited areas. So I select everything I want to see. To add a new file, go to Add. Navigate to where you want to go. Once again, I'm in my Bermuda High folder. And I happen to have created a CUB file for 2019 that includes the class Ds. So I'm going to add that and say OK. Now when I go to the map, we can see Bermuda High's airspace overlaid on top of the map. In a previous video, I talked about CU opening windows on top of windows, and that's exactly the case here. When we opened the Bermuda High waypoint file, we said open in a new window, and that left my original waypoints and tasks untouched. So we actually have two waypoint and task windows open. If we go to the window menu and look here, we have the original My Waypoints and Tasks, and we have the Bermuda High waypoint and task window that we opened. So if I select my original waypoints and tasks, we can see I'm back to my Ontario waypoints and tasks window. So both are open at the same time. What I want to do next is show you how to save a waypoint file. And so we do that, we can go file, save as, we can navigate to where we want to store it, type in our name and click save. When we do that, we get this dialog appears. And what it has is it has waypoints that are on the computer and waypoints that are on the task, and we can send them back and forth from left to right. Everything that's on the right hand side is going to end up being inside the file that you save. So double arrow sends everything across. If I save a file, it'll have nothing in it. If I want just uh, one, file, one point, I can send just one point across. But basically, we want to send all of our waypoints across. And probably, maybe not, all of our tasks across. So if I say OK here, that would save the file. I'm not going to save it. I'm going to click Cancel because I don't need it. 
So thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something new about CU today. Please subscribe to this Fox One Corp channel for more CU videos and visit me on the web at www.foxonecorp.com.